Welcome to another installment of Uniquely Union, a series of interviews to highlight the people that make Union County the great place it is to live and work. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing County Commissioner from the 6th District, Deborah Keck. Well, thank you, Dr. Mincy. It's a pleasure to be here. Always, always. And I always like to start a little background. All right. Because almost everybody I get the pleasure of interviewing, there's a background with them they may not even know. And I really didn't well, know Well, I'm it. not going to open up my closet <laughs> to you now. You can well, just forget that. some things need to remain <laughs> hidden, you know, your skeletons and all. But your husband is a brother to Tracy Keck. Yes. That I graduated from Union County High School with in 1983. Yes. And his oldest brother, Rick, uh, taught um, auto mechanics. For several years, I don't know mm -hmm. how many years he taught it, but he was. Yeah, a teacher he was at the well liked, school. well thought of. And your dad was William Shell. Correct. Now William Shell, my mother had insurance with Home Beneficial years. Yes. And that was the good old days when I never knew anybody to call him Bill Shell until years <laughs> after I grew up. He was always William Shell. Yeah. That's what mother called him, and he's always a treat when he'd come around. He could tell some stories. He always made me feel good. You know what he told me one time? It's no telling. He told me I should become a radio announcer. And look at you now. <laughs> this is the closest I'm I've ever got, you. but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and your brother is the pastor of Valley Grove Baptist Church, I yes. think. Yeah, and my good friend David Rigsby goes there. So I'm connected to you in all kinds of ways that you didn't even know. <sighs> Aren't you amazed? Uh, yeah, well, my husband was pastor just until last July, 22 years at Mount Zion Baptist Church okay. down in Anderson County. Okay. So you have a background of family in government also. Uh, yes, I do. Yes. And I'm very, very proud of my grandfather that uh, was the road superintendent. He was the road superintendent at 6872. I'd say that's before Floyd Loy, right? I suppose. I'm thinking. I don't know. Yeah. And your Aunt Linda Effler, there's another connection. Yeah. Linda, years ago when I worked summer youth at the Senior Citizen Center Office on Aging, she was the Ethra person okay. over the food. So I well, remember I knew her she from worked, there. I knew she worked there, but I didn't know what her actual title was. And she was Union County Circuit Court clerk. Yes. So yes. there's another political connection for you. And you graduated from Horace Maynard High School. HMHS, yes. All right. <laughs> there's just another connection, you know. And you are now retired but not retired. Uh, that's right, because I am into something every day of my life. That is good. Yeah. And you're certainly not bored. No, I haven't been bored the last two years. Really, I haven't. And you are a county commissioner. Whatever yes. possessed you to want to become a county commissioner, because that's not a role a lot of people would desire, to tell you the honest truth. <laughs> well, I had attended just about every commission meeting whenever I worked for the Honorable Mayor Mike Williams. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, you know, I might be able to contribute something to the county because... I don't plan on ever moving from the county. Mm -hmm. I guess the only time I'll move is whenever I'm dead and gone, you know. But uh, yeah, then you'll probably be buried in the county. So uh, yeah, I've not <laughs> got my plot yet, but we're working on it. Hey, I've got mine. I'm ahead <laughs> of you there. <laughs> but uh, when I found out that he wasn't going to run for mayor again, I thought now, because I really enjoyed being around the political people. Mm -hmm. Not that I enjoyed what most political people do, because I'm not your typical political person. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought, you know, I might be able to help the county in some way, because I had learned a lot. Uh, Mayor Williams had let me uh, make a lot of decisions. Of course, I would run them by him before the decision was made. Uh, but he let me spread my wings, so to speak, and help him out in the office. He never would allow me to call him, uh, him my boss. He said, I work with you, and you work with me, and that's the way it's done. 
So uh, I really appreciated that. Enjoyable experience then. Yes, yes. And let me tell you, it was an eye-opening experience because I had been in the uh, customer service for 38 years nearly. Mm -hmm. And that was working with the Credit Bureau of Knoxville for 24. And then I went to work at uh, Mutual Graphics and worked there for 14. I started out as the receptionist. Finally got to move out from that desk and went into the accounting office. But I still dealt with the public and had to talk with different people and different vendors and what have you. But going to work for Mayor Williams was, it was a huge learning experience. I know that several times he would look at me and he'd say, did you just crawl out from under a rock? <laughs> okay. Because, <laughs> you know, I believe people, whenever they told me something, they were telling me the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I did, had no reason not to. Welcome to the world of politics. Yeah, I, I, yeah it, was, it was an opening experience, and I thought, you know, Tipper, you can do better than this. You, can, you might be able to help somebody. And I believe in the last two years I have... I've not done any major things, but I think I have earned the respect for the voters in District 6. And you have enjoyed being on the commission, I take it? Yes. Yes, I have. And um, what would you say in your two years on the commission has been the biggest challenge or hindrance or whatever to what you might have wanted to see accomplished? Or has there been one? Um, well, when I worked, when I worked for the mayor, Mayor Williams, we had a lot of different things that were not completed, and I would have liked to have seen a few, a few more of those projects completed before he had left office. And it wasn't just something that he had cooked up or like the dog park. You know, we got, we got a dog park grant for $25,000. And, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen some more interest and, I don't know, uh, try to figure out how to get it in there at Wilson Park. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the others were... Uh, the walkway. The walkway from the... the yes. Uh, I would have liked to have seen to that uh, started. I don't even know if it's gotten started yet or not. But I would have, because we went over there and we did the training and the teaching mm -hmm. of the little kids. And, you know, that's always exciting mm -hmm. because you get to be hands-on with them. And it was, it was really nice. I guess the most difficult thing was trying to get a budget uh, passed last year because I didn't feel like that it was a balanced budget in my own my own mind, mm -hmm. because the way I would have balanced the budget is the way I balance my own budget at home. If you don't, every, if everything doesn't balance out right, you just can't borrow from one place and put mm -hmm. it and make it balance. But that's just me. <laughs> I work with federal programs. I so understand, you understand that. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's, uh, it's rather been a very uneventful first two years. And that can be good because sometimes an events are better than bad events. Yeah, yeah. But what has been your uh, most fulfillment in these two years or the thing that has happened in County Commission that you have enjoyed the most, appreciated the most? Getting to know the new commissioners mm -hmm. and how they stand on their platforms is an enjoyment because I knew how the older ones, what they stood for, and the newer ones, you know, you bring some new blood in mm -hmm. and they have a different outlook on different projects and, you know, they have their own. So I've really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the county commission has fairly good camaraderie among themselves? For the most part, I do. Yeah. Yeah. We have, in the past few years, enjoyed, for whatever reason, and we just enjoy it, we don't question it a lot, the school board and the county commission seem to have peace, which is very refreshing. And it seems like that most, there are disagreements occasionally, you know, but it doesn't become a major stumbling block or a big right. deal, doesn't right. seem like. In other words, people can disagree agreeably. Right, and you need to agree to disagree because right. everybody don't agree with what I like. 
And I won't agree with what everybody else likes all right. the time. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we can come to a common denominator. Now, that's the county commission part. Yeah, let's get, <laughs> let's get past that. <laughs> let's talk about something that's, that's a little more enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, Union County in general and the Union County Opry. Oh, yeah, the Union County Opry. What is your favorite thing about Union County itself? Uh, the people. Mm -hmm. The people in Union County. Uh, we're so diversified. It's just unreal. I mean, it's just... And by diversified, you mean... I mean, you have the... Uh, all walks of life. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have the little kids, you have the middle-aged kids, you have the teenagers, and all of them. You've got a, we've got a lot of good people in Union County. And Union County's population is right at 20,000. Correct. Highest it's been probably since uh, the 30s. Yeah. When TBA opened the dam and backed up Norris Lake. Um, tell us about the Union County Opry. Ah. Uh, it's a work of love, oh, I know. You know that. You know that. Uh, actually, we talked with uh, East Tennessee Foundation today. And we were in a, like an hour and a half long meeting with them. Great group of people. We just enjoyed talking with them. And they wanted to know all, of, all about our project. And then uh, they said, uh, you've never applied with any East Tennessee Foundation. Well, no, we just started 2019. Mm -hmm. It was like a whirlwind. It was... You know, Danny Cook, Commissioner Danny Cook in the fourth, and Commissioner Sidney Jesse in the second. And here we got together and we start making all these plans, and it was just like you were caught up in the in a tornado, and everything was just happening so fast. But you know, we you know we had our first show on the in April of two thousand and nineteen. Fabulous show. We had oh Lord, I guess fifteen bands there, but we wanted to showcase everything we could. We tried to get everything in there that we could possibly get. It exceeded your expectations, I believe. It sure did. I we believe had, it exceeded most people's expectations. We had a, we had a real good, uh, enjoyable year. It wasn't, and it just wasn't all bluegrass. We had some rock, we had some country, we had gospel, we had comedians, and it was, uh, more the Moron Brothers are just superb. They are just hilarious. And they have the most interesting name, don't they? Moron Brothers. Yeah, <laughs> and they will be here July the 18th. We are having a our first show July the 18th. And that's the first actual live show after the COVID-19 yes. shutdown, shall we say. Uh, we plan on having it down here in the new Farmer's Market Pavilion. Oh, really? If we can get the... Uh, uh, bathroom facilities and stuff like that, that in. That would be exciting. Yes, yes. And it was, it'll, it'll be out in the How many venue. people could that area accommodate, do you predict? Uh, Pretty much unlimited, I'd say. Commissioner as long Cook as they... says 250. I don't know. I don't have a clue on something like that. I can't mm -hmm. look at it. Uh, I tell them whenever uh, people will say, well, you need to get so and so, well, you call Danny Cook. You call Commissioner Cook. Mm -hmm. He handles all that. That's, that's not for me to do. Mm -hmm. I would book somebody and they'd just be a total flop. <laughs> now, <laughs> I kind of doubt that. But <laughs> <laughs> but now he does research on people and he'll listen to their demos. And mm -hmm. and that's what he enjoys doing. You know, I just kind of sat back with an ink pen and a bank statement. You, you're playing the role I like to play in organizations. <laughs> I'm a silent I'll partner. I'll take the notes and be the treasurer now, or whatever. Uh, Sydney, it's a, it's a labor of love, but, and it's a family thing because uh, Danny Cook's wife, Dorinda, she really puts a lot of work into it. Mm -hmm. Of course, Danny uh, does some in the Opry Band. Sydney Jesse Jr., commissioner in the second district, he plays in the Opry Band. And, his wife sings in the Opry Band, and uh, Danny's daughter-in-law sings in the Opry Band. So it's it's a labor of love. It has to be because we don't pay nobody unless they're asked to come and perform, like the Moron Brothers and stuff like that. People like that. We don't pay the Opry Band. They do it because they want to do it. So the backup plan, if you can't have it at the farmers market, high school auditorium, probably. We got. Yes, a call from Dr. Carter today, and he's, he's given us the go-ahead. But we felt like 
and the ETF that was there today said, we think it would be a good idea for you to go ahead and just plan the <clears throat> outside venue for mm -hmm. your first one. It would be different. Yeah. And yeah. We like different once in a while. Yeah. To get us out. Let's just hope it doesn't rain that day. <laughs> well, if it does, we'll just go to the auditorium, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. And then practice social distancing. Yes, yes. Uh, and that can be difficult to do even in an outdoor setting. Yeah. But I think people are more comfortable to mm -hmm. being outside. Yeah. You know, they have the freedom to move around a little bit better and they're breathing fresh air. And mm -hmm. So, one way or the other, July the 18th, is it? Yeah, July the 18th. I brought my, my cheat sheet here. Uh, the Moron Brothers, Tim White, uh, with the VW boys. Now, the Moron brothers really tell some wild stories. We like wild stories. Oh. <laughs> One of them came in with his uh, guitar case, and it was taped together with duct tape. There was not a place on that guitar case that didn't have duct tape on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he looked like he was just as poor as a little old church mouse. Looks can be so deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure that the people that we have lined up uh, for the Opry shows, they're looking forward to getting back out and entertaining because, you know, they've been, they've had their hands tied too. They've mm -hmm. not been able to get out and do anything. Have you seen an increase in the number in the audience from the first until yes. the last live performance you yes. got to have? Yes, and, and we've seen just a lot of interest we actually got put in the Tennessee uh, Tourism Magazine. And the mag that magazine's probably about uh, three quarters of an inch thick. Mm -hmm. And we're, we got put in that, and that goes all over the whole state. And we also got uh, a little uh, clip in the farm and home, or the home and farm, I can't remember now which way it goes, through the uh, uh, Farmer's Bureau uh, magazine, we got into that, and we've gotten several calls that the day that that went out, there was still some people in Union County that didn't have a clue that we were having any kind of music shows. Sometimes we have well kept secrets; they're <laughs> wide open. But <laughs> even though we have the signs up, you know, and mm -hmm. um, you have other interests, of course. Yes. Now, music, you say is an interest of yours. Yes, I well, play I play a bass guitar. Okay. And I play with I house. would never have known that. Yeah, I, I love it. I took lessons for three years down at Woods Music. Mm -hmm. And um, I play with a group called House Mountain Grass. And we have been on one of the live Facebook uh, opera shows from uh, down in the, they've got a little theater set up down next to uh, Kitchen Design Center, and they had us to come in and do a thirty-minute show down there. And I, I just, I enjoy it. I enjoy playing. Are music. you all planning to perform for the Union County Opry? Well, we were scheduled to play uh, in May, I believe it was, but they've had to rearrange everything, and so mm -hmm. we won't be there this year. And we, that's okay. We can hope next year. But, yeah. you know, that's okay. And, and I have gardening stuff that I do. My husband thinks we have to have a garden every year because our grandson thinks that we have to have mm -hmm. corn. And uh, I've inherited chickens from my grandson when he was in 4-H. And you mow. Oh, now, Lord, You must help be talking me. lawn mowing. Yes, and my husband, bought, I told him, I said, if you'll buy me a push mower, I said, I can trim for you because he had quadruple bypass at the end of 2018. And last year, I thought, well, to keep him, you know, I was going to be nice to him. And to keep him from having to come home from work and mow the yard, that I would help him out. <laughs> he didn't hesitate. He went and bought me a, it's not self-propelled. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get exercise and oh, keep your yes. youthful figure. <laughs> oh, yes. This is not from laying in the sun either. <laughs> but, yeah, I got me a, I got a push mower. And then he went and bought me a, a John Deere riding lawn mower. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing the, the yard work. 
Now are you one of these mowers that likes to mow in the pretty patterns and all the lines go well, the same way? Well, he used to tell me that, uh, he used to not let me mow. Mm -hmm. Because he's so, my husband's a very particular person. Everything has to be done a certain way. Mm -hmm. And he used to tell me that uh, I couldn't mow because I would write my name in the yard. <laughs> I'm not that smart. <laughs> I know what he means, though, because <laughs> my goal when I mow is to knock down grass, not to have pretty little patterns. Yes. So uh, I followed him one night on the right. He had his riding lawn more, and I got on mine, mm -hmm. and I followed him. He would go. We'd be like this, and he was showing me how he wanted it mowed. So how big is the space you have to mow? It's a lot. It takes me about four hours to get it done the way I think he wants it done. Mm. Bless you, when my I child. push, <laughs> when I push and trim and mm -hmm. yeah, it's a and running is a hobby of oh, yours. Oh yeah, I like to do. Tell that us about too. running a little bit. Oh yeah, I got into a run club over at Big Ridge State Park in 2014 in April, and my goal was just to learn how to run because I never could run. I always got side stints. And if you've ever ran and got a side stint, oh, that would bend you over. It's just like a knife sticking in your side. So uh, Sarah Nicely, one of the rangers over there, she had this run club, so we did it. And my first uh, 5K was at Cove Lake State Park, and that was the last run of the run club for that training period. So that was my first 5K, and that was at Cove Lake State Park. So was it a race to see who came in first and all that uh, stuff? Yeah, needless to say, I did not come in first. <laughs> I wouldn't probably make it to the end. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, and I've never really come in first. For me to finish mm -hmm. is a personal accomplishment. How long does it take you roughly to run the 5K, would you estimate? Well, if all the stars are aligned properly... And I'm very hydrated. <laughs> it would probably take me around 40 minutes. Well, that's not bad. In my well, I opinion, don't think I mean, so. For, my, I know about for my age group. I used to go to Cades Cove every year and walk the bicycle trail. Yeah. One year it took me four and a half hours. One year it took me five and a half. One year it took me five. And then I never went back. <laughs> well, 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 you improved one year. Yeah, one year was all right. But, but yeah, I enjoy running it. I can get out and it clears my mind. Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, mowing you find relaxing. Yeah. You can do a lot of thinking on the lawnmower. Yeah, when it's you do a lot up, of thinking. Nobody can hear you or you can't hear them. Right, right. So that's what you are and what you do. What about the future? What's the future well, hold for Deborah Keck? <laughs> I told my husband, I said, I'm going to uh, say... There's never been a female mayor before in Union County, have they? I don't think. He said, I don't know of one. He said, you're surely not going to say that. I said, I think I will. <laughs> but no, I'm not going to do that. Hmm. I've got enough gray hair. I don't need, I, I want to keep my hair. I don't want it to fall out. Uh-huh. So what are you going to do? Uh, enjoy my life. What I have left, I'm going to enjoy it. Enjoy That's, my grandkids. I'm a, maybe five, ten years down the road, I may have some great-grandchildren. There you go. Where would you like to see Union County in ten years? 2030. 2030 in ten years. I would like to see the four-lane road connected. Supposedly that'll happen. And I hope it does. <laughs> I dread driving through the construction, but <laughs> it, it would help. Um, and I would like to see us have a micro motel. Mm -hmm. And, of course, for the Opry, I would love to see an event center. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that happen. Not just for the Opry, but for any kind of event that Union County would have, like graduations in high school, middle school, something that would hold enough people that comfortably that you can go in and sit down and relax, maybe have a little cafeteria in it, cafe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, working for the school system, I know there's interest among some to build a new school, and mm -hmm. it seems to be 
uh, new middle schools where the most of what I hear seems to indicate well, that would be the direction. That's what I've heard too, but then I heard Dr. Carter say that that middle school was also known as the HMHS High School, mm -hmm. was probably one of the best built buildings in Union County. Honestly, it has less cracks in it than any of the other buildings we have. So I guess, and I'm not throwing down on the school system by no means, because I would go with Mayor Williams to all of the elementary, all the kindergarten graduations. Mm -hmm. That was so sweet. Those kids just absolutely would love you. And in 2014 through 2018, we saw slight declines in the classes. So I'm just wondering, is our school now, population say, declining? Yeah, and when you say decline, you mean in numbers of in students. In numbers, because uh -huh. when he would buy the places and things to give to the little kids, we tried to gauge mm -hmm. and did one big bulk buy, and it didn't work because we got he got stuck with several plates and, and you know other things and and I'm just wondering is our county not not thriving good enough for the school for for kids for people to bring their kids up in Union County uh, I know we have a lot of retirees that are coming down mm -hmm. and I I'm just wondering if we're going to become a retiree county Interesting idea. Of course, it seems like lots of people these days don't have children as young as they used to. No. And they don't marry as young as they used to. Uh, I've heard it jokingly said that COVID-19, in five years, we will have a huge kindergarten <laughs> class. Because <laughs> well, I hope what we do you do when you're socially isolated? I hope you we know? do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that pans out in five years, 2025. <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember, you said that, not me. Well, I was just repeating what I've heard now. Everybody can remember that, too. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like Union County John Q. Public to know about Deborah Keck and her aspirations that we have not touched on? Well, uh, I always tell everybody that uh, if you have a question, I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have my personal Facebook and I have my commission Facebook. You can ask me anything and I will try to figure out or find out I like to do fact-finding before I make a statement about something. And that is always wise. Yes, that's one thing Mayor Williams taught me. Do not respond to anything unless you know the facts, blah, blah, blah. That's good conservative <laughs> republicanism. <laughs> um, as you know, he, he, he was a really good, he was a really good uh, boss to me. Uh, but uh, yes, you can contact me on Facebook. Okay. Probably the easiest way to get me because if I don't recognize your phone number, I usually don't answer it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, no, I'm just there for them. I, I'm not just there for the sixth district. A commissioner, I, I represent the whole county. As, and, as it should be. I think. And if there's an item that comes up on the agenda that uh, you might not like, call me up or contact me on Facebook. We will talk about it. I, I can talk with you about it and find out what your opinion is about it. And that leads me to another question. I know COVID-19 has been a major interruption of meetings. They've had to be mm -hmm. um, Zoom meetings and conference calls by telephone, a mix of all of those. But before COVID-19 became an issue, how was the attendance at a county commission meeting by the public? It really depended on what was on the agenda. If mm -hmm. they thought some, if something might be controversial, of course you'd have a bigger crowd. Of course. Yeah, you know. So we're, we're the same way in the school board. <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, it, it's been uh, moderate. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. And we've had a we've had a lot of uh, good people to come and, t and speak and talk to the county commissioners. It's, it's been, I think it's been rewarding for them as much as it has been for us. That's the idea of government, a good exchange and flow of ideas. Mm -hmm. 
Now, granted, we're not perfect. Who is? <laughs> Correct. And, uh, but yeah, I would like for people to know I'm approachable. I've had people approach me at Food City just recently mm -hmm. asking me about something that was on the agenda. You know, when I tell them, I say, well, what's your point of view on that? You tell me how you feel about it and why you feel that way. Because I need to know what they're thinking. Right. And if I'm thinking the opposite, then something's not right. I don't have all the information or I have the information and they don't understand it like I do. I understand that concept because I could not explain the federal program's budget to you, I don't think. It's got all these little nicks and cuts and turns that oh, you yeah. have to, all the oh, yeah. regulations you have to meet. <laughs> I did try once upon a time to do a thorough explanation of it and the group, which was a highly educated group actually that I was talking to, they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And I couldn't simplify it for them because <laughs> you have to have a frame of reference sometimes yeah. for certain things to understand. Yeah. Okay, one last chance for you to say whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love Union County, and I, I'll, I'll be here for the rest of my life. And it's people like you that make Union County the great place it is to live and work. Well, thank you, Dr. Mincy. And that's why we have these interviews, so that we can highlight people that do take an active and role. And here I thought I was a very boring person. Told you you'd be all right, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure being here with you. And wish we had longer to talk, but all good things must come to an end. Well, that's know. true. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for joining us for this installment of Uniquely Union, and we'll see you at the next one. Thank you. <laughs>